to frame this as something that somehow black natives from America are bringing into Latino America is completely disingenuous, A, and B, it ignores the history that exists of Afro natives within the region, such as the Garifuna, who are considered technically native due to the circumstances that produce them, and the long history of Afro native people across the southern continent itself. To that so, end, I yeah, also well, want I've to actually, I've, 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 that I am Hold on, hold on. So, Marta, finish, finish it up and land the plane? From Guatemala, from the pueblo in which I was born, within my indigenous community, in the aftermath of a genocide. So let us be very clear about what we are bringing up and how, and the ignoring of the historical context that just occurred from Fidel. Thank you. Got it. So, yeah, Fidel, so a lot, hold on, hold, a lot on, of Fidel, these, hold on, hold on, Fidel. So, it's, uh, just to clarify, Fidel, um, what if somebody tells you that? Like, what if somebody says, like, hey, there's been like a lot of like Afro native, uh, discrimination going on and they've been having their own little movement in Mexico. And somebody says that, like, you know, this isn't just coming from America. This has been coming from like the roots of Mexico. What if somebody tells you that? Like, what's your response to that? If somebody, if somebody's no, bringing I mean, that to you. Yeah. I mean, I would actually li have to look into that myself, really. I would have to look into that and, um, that thing, uh, she mentioned something about the Zapatistas. So what does, were the Zapatistas, uh, going against the, uh, the community, the people, or were they going against the government? The Zapatistas are a famous movement largely because they're widely considered to be one of the most, and again, yeah, big mistake. Yeah. Look into credible sources. Thank you for bringing that up. So to that end, the Zapatistas are famous because they are considered to be one of the most successful land back movements in the sense that they declared what was functionally independence from Mexico during NAFTA. I have family that lives in Zapatista controlled areas. And a lot of Zapatista writing for it contextualizes itself of what does it mean to be indigenous within capitalism? What does it mean to be indigenous within a society that is built against you, that is built on your destruction, that is built to degrade you to the very core of what you are? Uh, and it's a response to colonialism. It's a response to the world as it exists. And it ties into broader writers and the broader movement of indigenous people across the centuries who are trying to identify what does it mean to be indigenous? What does it mean to exist in this space? And what does it mean to even exist in a world where you are systematically discriminated against on a social, political, ethnic, yeah. and economic level? So it's against the government, not the people directly, right? Well, no, it's also a response to the people because Mexico does have a widespread issue of anti-indigeneity. You do not get the conditions of indigenous people in Mexico and Guatemala across Centro America without there being a level of complicity from the general public. We have an issue with race. We have an issue with colorism. These are all factors that play into how indigenous people exist and then how in turn we define our identity. Can it be possible that it's not colorism but classism? It's an intersection of both. Praxis is necessary to understand the conditions of indigenous people. You can't just say it's yeah, just yeah. These, ta these talking the points, yeah, these talking points, and functions. Yeah, these talking points. Uh, they really, they're really coming from the United States. This isn't really something. No, that they're not. In, in I'm America. referring to and the reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah they are. Yeah, yeah, they are. I, I, and, and you know, the reason I say this is because I do conversate a lot with uh, di on different platforms: African Americans, Hispanics, Indigenous people, and I've heard this. Um, I've heard this uh, one uh, podcaster, African American guy, uh, on, on, on one of his lives. Who you are and, 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 then, coming from. and and then and then hold on, hold on. Since you say it's and, American, you know, I've, heard, I've heard I've heard something. I've I've heard this uh, conversation before where they said that um, they want to up their numbers. Uh, black people want to up their numbers, so it is important for them to get uh, people in Latin America, whether they're indigenous or or Latino, I to want identify. A source on that identify I want as to black that. i'm giving you he, my he just mentioned experience. he just mentioned a, a podcast where he heard this from a single yeah. podcast does not uh, define well, how well, black well i mean there's i mean i have i actually have a video America. i i've 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 seen video okay listen 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 so i'm telling you what uh they're, they're yeah. saying they want to up their numbers and the only way they want to up their numbers in order to cuz it kind of seems like they're kind of uh i don't know they have this competitive mentality against latinos here in the united states politically so the only way they're going to beat latinos politically is if they can up their numbers and the only way to get them to do that is if you can get 
Af these so-called Afro-Latinos in, La in, in the United States to identify with as black. That's the only way they're going to beat Latinos. And this is just, this is coming out of an African-American's mouth, and I'm just communicating what, what, what yeah, I heard. A singular you know? African-American person, a singular African-American's podcast doesn't define racial reality as a whole or define racial well, politics. I mean, a lot, I mean, so he, can I finish had, now because I'm few, responding to you? He had a few, a few thousand uh, people uh, agreeing with wow, him. Wow, a so. few thousand people like Joe Rogan's podcast when he says dumb shit too. It just, what do you want me to do with that? What I can tell you is, from the broader accepted movement of black people, there are different ethnicities of blackness. You can be Afro-Latino and be black because you're Afro-Latino. You're also black. It's a broad category. When you are African American, so what, you are but, black. But why, when you are Nigerian, but why, but why, but why do you, you are guys, black. Martha? I, I but why do you guys so want to? Why do you, why do you guys want to apply the? Okay, hold on. The host is talking. The one okay, hold on, guys, guys, guys. Host is talking. The host is Martha, talking. But why do you guys want to adopt? Mute. Why do you guys bring your you racist one you drop to Latin America? Everyone, host is talking. Host is talking. Host is talking. Go ahead. So, Marta, you just you just said something that was um, really interesting that I want to address. So you had just said if you are like Afro Latino, let's say you, you can claim black, right? Yeah. You can claim that side because you're also that, right? Mm -hmm. OK, so when you say then, then that also applies to uh, Latinos who are Spaniard and indigenous, yet they're told that they cannot claim their indigenous side. They want them, but they're okay, right? There's some indigenous people that are okay with them claiming the Spaniard side, even though I've never been to Spain. I'm pretty sure Fidel has never been to Spain. I don't know any of my Spaniard ancestors, right? But they're okay with us claiming that, but not okay with us claiming indigenous. And then you just said, you can also claim black, right? Because you are that. Well, yeah. we are So Spaniard. let me address that again, well, because I said it earlier, and I think you might have missed it. Let me address that because oh, you might have missed miss it. it. Oh, you did, because I said it earlier. We Black Ka is Kelly, a racial you, category. Can repeat the last part. I, I didn't. Un, I didn't get that last part you said, Kelly, because she interrupted you. Can you say that last part, please, again? Yeah. So, um, what I said was, is, is she had mentioned that you can be like Afro Indigenous, right? And then you can claim your black side because you're also that. But, but they have a problem when we claim our Indigenous side, right? Even though we are also that. Can I address that now? Sure. Okay, great. So black is a racial, it's a racial category. Racialization is key in what blackness means, right? That is what blackness is. Indigeneity is not a purely racial category. And that is the crux of this that is not being understood. Being indigenous in Latino America, and to this end, I refer to Jessica Hernandez, who's a Maya scholar born in Latino America, who writes about this extensively. Her, the introduction to her book, which is also in Spanish, explains this very clearly. To be indigenous in Latino America is a lived sociopolitical ethnic identity. It is rooted in connection to one's culture and community. We do not rely on race science, on blood quantum, on colonial concepts of blood to define that identity. So when we say, Oh, when people want to come to us and say, oh, well, I have this percentage. We're not telling you you can't be Native. What we want you to do is to reconnect respectfully. We want you to reconnect in a way that encourages decolonization. Who is we? That has who is we? Families, that respects existing. Yeah, and then you can tell families. me who is we. Indigenous people, because I am referring to the broader sense okay. of what the broader so, political so movement who, in Latin would, America is who would be for Indigenous people right now. To that end, I refer to the the leader of your tribe national protest. or your Puebla. Huh? Who would, who would, see, here's what I have a problem with also. I have a problem with some natives that probably either the Pueblo or their, their tribes, most people probably don't even know them on the res, but they'll come and they'll tell us how we should take our pathway, right, in order to connect when they're not the chief. Like you bring a chief in here. Well, I want to hear it from them and then we can have a discussion. Other than that, you're on my playing field. You don't get to dictate how somebody is going to take their pathway and say, this is the way that you should do it. I mean, who are you?
Exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, here's another thing that we've noticed also about this whole thing. It looks, it seems here that a lot of people, especially indigenous, and indigenous, I get it, man. They're, they're in a very tough position. I think they actually got done worse than African Americans here in the United States. Um, you know, being that they were, you know, just small in numbers because of what, you know, the colonizers did. With, and, and also the African, the African slaves that came here also contributed to the slaughtering and, and graping of, of the indigenous people. I think they're in a very tough position. Uh, I think if, if a group like an African American group comes out and reaches out to them and, 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 and offers them their, their help, they're kind of, you know, they're going to take it because who else is going to help them? But, you know, it's kind of like a double edged, edged sword at the same time because all I hear, uh, a, a lot of indigenous people, not all of them, you know, you know, you know, some, some of them are repeating, they're repeating the exact same talking points that are coming from African Americans. So is it African Americans? Well, well, is it, I, I, or is it indigenous? people that ones that are leading this right right just to add to this and kind of like i want to plead devil's advocate here because you know martha's out here getting tag tag teamed um just to add devil's advocate i do disagree with one thing about martha how she um labels uh blackness to be a race when in in a you know in all actuality obviously the black skin comes from somewhere right um and some of them came from you know haiti and some of them came from other south american uh areas and they kind of migrated up north and they kind of blended in and they kind of uh or some of them could come from africa itself but um and i, I know like a lot of people don't want to claim that um they don't want to claim like okay they came from haiti or they came from this other specific country or they came from chile or they came from you know puerto rico or something like that while they're coming into mexico and trying to integrate but um, I can see where she's coming from, how she's saying how there is classism, there is colorism, and we're very aware of that. That is happening in Mexico. And the darker skinned Mexicans, like the ones that are kind of like mixed with some type of like, uh, uh, black, um, or, you know, uh, what we would consider like a, a, a black country or something like that from South America, they're getting hard, like discriminated against. So, uh, to that point, R Roxana, you seem like opposition. Do you have any comment to like say on this in, uh, upon Martha's behalf? And then we can jump to Martha, see what her rebuttal is. Uh, well, just one thing that Fidel said that really stuck out to me was that indigenous people in Mexico were treated worse than black people in America were treated when they were. Uh, uh, no, no, I said, the, no, I said the ones here in the United States were actually done worse than African Americans. The ones, say that again. The, the Native Americans, talking the about United the, States I, I was talking natives. about the Native Americans. Yeah, the oh, United States Natives, gotcha. not the ones in Mexico. Okay. Yeah, so we were asking you a question, Roxana. Like, you seemed like you were opposition to this, like, you, because I was reading your comments. What do you have to say uh, to this whole thing, uh, you know, uh, uh, to uh, Afro um you know mexicans feeling some sort of discrimination within mexico and then them kind of having the right to claim either side uh of either black or uh indigenous w what do you have to say upon like this because you seem like you have a talking point for martha's behalf i believe that everyone's lived experiences are valid and trying to tell someone that never happened or that does just because i that's disrespectful and disingenuous what marta speaks on her behalf should be respected that's it okay marta what do you have to say as a rebuttal to uh what kelly x mentioned yeah i'm gonna go by i'm gonna start with fidel and then i'm gonna go to kelly x yeah we gotta break this one down first of all i want to push back on the bad faith narrative that fidel is pushing which is that i'm pulling like american talking points when most of the conversations that I have are rooted in the fact that I was born in Guatemala, I grew up in Guatemala, my pueblo, I am politically active in Guatemala, and the only reason I have an American accent is that I went north and then I came back south to go back to my community. So, to that end. Second, I also want to push back on the bad faith narrative that Fidel is pushing, which is that, oh, well, black people in America didn't suffer as much as Native Americans. There is literally no point but to serve them it's white supremacy to sit around and say, well, who suffered more? Who suffered more? And it also completely ignores the way that anti-blackness functions and its historical impact within the United States. I'm not going to get into who suffered more. And I think that's quite frankly unnecessary and harmful to try to go down that route. Third, in regards to what Fidel is saying, again, he keeps trying to push this idea that people are exporting talking points from America to Latino America while ignoring, actively ignoring 
the legacy of Latino writers, of indigenous writers, of Afro-indigenous writers, and of Black Latino writers, Afro-Latino writers, whichever term they prefer to use, of that. That is so, the three things I wanted to address with him. I'm going to move on to Cali X now. Cali okay. X is right on the line. First of all, Cali X wants to say to me, well, what about reservations? Baby, we don't even have reservations in Latino America. If you're going to come after us, then at least get your information. I, I never first. said that. Let me finish. You did say res. Baby, you said res. I caught you. Isaac caught you. Isaac and, 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 and what did I say Let after that? Let me finish that. talking. I didn't interrupt you. Thank you. I also said the Pueblo. You also said to me that you want to bring a chief up here as if indigenous people amongst ourselves don't have conversations, don't build our own political movements, which is blatant in Guatemala when we're staging national protests, where we discuss what it means to be what we are in the space that we are and in the contemporary context. So again, you're making a very broad generalization that's functionally a bad faith argument that ignores how these <clears throat> communities function. Fidel, let me finish because I saw you go active. Two, in regards to indigenous identity, I go back to, again, the point of racialization. <laughs> Blackness does function as a racial category. To that end, I can refer to a wealth of black writers who've explained this both from Latino America and from North America. We can do the whole gauntlet and I can start listing off authors now if you want. Doesn't that perpetuate colorism, though, by just identifying no. as a color? <laughs> no. Yeah. Because racialization is in itself. And again, you're trying to flip the script and say, I'm not. well, if black people have an idea of what blackness means, doesn't that make it colorism? No, because black no, people do, you use like all other oppressed groups do. We've you seen the same the thing. Of trying to figure out what this identity is, what it means, and how it is being racialized in the broader context. But why because are we ashamed to claim exist, Africa? And that is a phenomenon that is well documented. Why are we so ashamed to claim point. Africa, though? Why are we what? ashamed to claim like some some areas of South America? Like we know exactly where it came from. It came from possibly Haiti. It came from possibly Puerto Rico. It came from South America or it came from Africa. Why are we ashamed to claim that? Claim what part? Blackness or indigeneity? Blackness. Again. Oh, here we go again. That's a good point. You can have black ancestry, but not mm -hmm. be racialized or live as black. And that is a key idea that people on but this panel are But we're calling it black again. again. Why aren't we calling it Haitian? Why aren't we calling it African? Why are we ashamed? Because because she's repeating American talking points. That's why. Because, because she wants she Fidel, wants to Fidel, normalize Fidel. the label Fidel, black in Latin America. Fidel, she wants on. to labelize it. Fidel, chill. I'm talking to Martha. Let's let's get it back and forth. So Martha, go ahead. Yeah. So again, when I say black. Again, I'm referring to a very broad category in Latino America because we don't have various black ethnic groups. Let me backtrack. In the United States, part of the reason why black is the in vogue term to use is that in the United States, due to the nature of its history and politics, there are various black ethnic groups. There are African-Americans, there are Nigerians, there are Haitians. There are mm -hmm. all sorts of these different black ethnic groups that are different. An African-American does not have the same cultural or historical context as somebody who's from Nigeria, for example, or a black person from Trinidad. Those are different experiences and thus why there are different black ethnic groups within the broader category, which is blackness as a race. Within Latino America, because we prefer to use the term Afro-Latino, that is the broad catch-all term for referring to black people who are Latino. And you can see right. that in the writings of Afro-Latino authors who explore what it means to be Afro-Latino in this context. Right. But then at the same time, I could turn that around and say, hey, guess what? There are actual African-American writers who still claim their African descent. There are Haitian-American writers that still claim their Haitian descent. Isn't that just a big slap in the face to them to say like, no, eh, we don't being know. Being Afro-Latino isn't a rejection of your African descent. The it is Afro because is there not even you reason. will acknowledge it. Huh? Not even you will acknowledge it. I acknowledge that I have ancestors who are black. My ancestors were brought from Africa on a slave ship to Trinidad where they were slaves there we, there for two generations before emancipation. So you're, you would, uh, you're African Guatemalan? I'm Afro indigenous again, because I hybridize the terms because I am both. Thus why the term exists in the first place. There's my claiming of my indigeneity it, and my blackness is not a denial of either. It is an admission that I am both and blackness. I exist at the intersection of both. <laughs> mm. the, the, the one well, why, thing that why, I do, why, why, why use Vidal, the one drop this. rule in, in, let, let me finish in, in this another at least. people. Why, why do you want to erase uh, a, a, a Latino uh, well, with Africa? Hold on, hold on. Videl, let me finish this at least. Um, so we, when we use the term, Latino. like, what, when we use colors, what about, what about, what about the indigenous and what about Videl, the European? Videl, why, why only Afro? Videl, let me, let me at least land this, okay? 
because when we use these terms like whiteness and blackness, we do just kind of like empower that whole colorism because the same thing when we put a broad spectrum on white folks that are Irish, that are German, that are Hungarian, that are Italian, we just kind of lump them all together and we just empower the same way that that whole term whiteness came from. It, it was used to oppress black individuals, Hispanic individuals, and, and uh, I believe Asian individuals by claiming like there is a white, there is a white race, there is a white people. We can all unite against these minorities. But why empower that by using these colorisms? Oh, God. Okay, so I first want you to define the term colorisms because I looked it up on Google and that word doesn't exist. Second yeah, of all, but we know what it means. Second of all, let me address the historical context here before we get uh-huh. into it. Whether or not you and I feel comfortable with the fact that the terms black and white exist, we cannot change that because we live in a society that has experienced colonization, imperialism, and the creation of race as a concept. Post chattel slavery, and because of the way chattel slavery functioned within the West, These racial categories exist and they continue to influence life. You and I refusing to use those terms doesn't erase the ways that they are impacting the world as it exists. We're talking about the empowerment of it. Let me continue then. Yeah, we're talking social empowerment because you're talking about social movements. And so that's what we're talking about. Social movements. And again, the language that I am using echoes that which is used in these social empowerment movements that are rooted in black communities in the United States. And then moving beyond that to where I'm actually from, which Fidel was talking about, in Latin America. that is exactly, exactly. what Fidel exactly. said. Thank you. So that's where it comes from, right? I mean, no, look, look, really just, quickly. Look, let me say something. Let me, let me say something. Let me say something. Let me say something. Okay, listen. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say something, please. Okay. Okay. So. So. So here. Here's. Here. Here's the thing. For those. For those of you who don't know what's going on, right? Let me go ahead. Let me. Let me go ahead and say this. Okay. Yes. I know. I understand, Martha. Martha. So this is. This is what I. What. What I keep hearing in the African American community. They want to they want to popularize uh they want to make it sound cool, Afro Latino, Afro Indigenous, and they want to popular they want to normalize the black label. Because through the black label, they're thinking that they're gonna they're they're gonna go to Latin America and prop up a Afro Latino and make make her or him a star. And what they want to do is they want to funnel all that money that they would be making under the label black and funnel it back to the United States into their communities. This is all about money. It's about sex. It's about power. It's about business. People believe it or not. They're creating this whole narrative, this victim narrative, narr- narrative, so they can come in here with an excuse. They're just using us. They're using indigenous people. They're using Latinos for their own political and social gains. They don't give a shit about us. All right. They never give the shit about indigenous people in the united states they never have okay this is just all a freaking prop just so it can come back to their communities okay so don't buy into Fidel, the bullshit Vidal. so i i don't disagree with you that yes there are like a lot of politically minded individuals especially like you know that could be coming from like this whole like you know african afro uh um uh, Afro uh, indigenous movement, but I, you know, that is true that there are some um, people that come from like, you know, black areas like that. CJ, mute yourself, bro. If you got nothing to say, just mute yourself. But anyway, hey, why are you coming to me like that, dog? Because we can you hear all your rubbing of the mic. My- Thank you. So anyway, um, we do know that there is some discrimination that a lot of, uh, I guess we can say like, you know, Haitian, Guatemalan people or people from like South America that they migrate up north and they, they want to integrate and there's a, like a lot of discrimination. Of course, I do think that Martha is approaching it like, you know, poorly. And I, I don't think it sort of addresses their issues, but I do, we do. I mean, we got to admit there is some discrimination against those black individuals that come from like, you know, Haiti and they're, they're half Mexican, half Haitian. They're, you know, they're, uh, Dominican and they're, they're like Mexican as well. And even though they're, or even they're in the Dominican Republic and they're just darker skinned individuals and they receive discrimination from the lighter skinned individuals. So, I mean, isn't that true though? I mean, Fidel, we can't be ignorant of that, right? Uh, sorry, dude. I cut off, dude. Uh, that Bruh. last part. I heard the. the I, I heard. The, I heard the, the beginning. Just the very last part. I'm saying that isn't there also like 
immigrants, that people that come from South America that are migrating up north to like Guatemala and Mexico, mm -hmm. they're darker skinned yeah. and they like straight up look black, but they're speaking our language. They're speaking, uh, they're speaking mm -hmm. uh, Spanish. And aren't they facing discrimination? Mm -hmm. And they're facing like a harsh discrimination as well by the native or the uh, original people there. I mean, isn't that also like real? I mean, that's problematic, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it exists everywhere. That's what I'm saying. But look, my, my main thing here is that uh, I can't believe uh, indigenous people or more Hispanic people have not caught caught up, caught on to this, man. OK, uh, this term black, these labels, blacks and white, these are not terms that we identify in Latin America. OK, these are labels that started off here in the United States and they're trying to impose them I, I in agree. our community. I agree because with that. That's my main thing. Okay, so in other words, she she kind of you're saying like she ousted herself by using the same language, like the same wordage that they're using in North America. Callie, what do you have to say to all this? Because I know you've been paying attention. Uh, what's your response to all this? So I don't I think if, if someone is, um, you know, let's say half um, a, a black and then half indigenous, I don't think that they're using that because they're i mean they're they're still indigenous right like any way you want to look at it they're they're still indigenous so i don't think that they're, they're doing anything to like you know use uh i i guess the their blackness or whatever to to like um i i guess to take over our communities or to do anything because it, it is also their community right so i think that we we still have to acknowledge the fact that we do have, you know, I guess they want to call themselves Afro-Indigenous, which I don't, that, the, I guess the only thing I have a problem with that, like even Afro-Latino, like when we see you phenotypically, we know, like, really, like, there's no reason to, to put, slap a label on it and go, oh, well, but I'm also African. Yeah, yeah, we know. You know, um, if you don't phenotypically look like us, we know. The other thing is that as a Latino or a Latina or, you know, even a Mexican, like you are that without putting an additional label. You know, it's not like we're saying, oh, well, we're indigenous Latinos, right? Or we're this, you know, we're whatever, Scottish Latino. Nobody does that. <laughs> Right, except for the commun that community, and so I feel like it, it it causes a division when we've already mm -hmm. included you in 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 our group, right, as Latino or as Hispanic or as whatever, and I don't understand why, you know, because we're not saying Asian Latinos. Nobody says mm -hmm. that. Yeah, can I answer that? It's because they want to they want to stand out and they want to uh, popularize the name. They want to be put on a pedestal like they have been here in the United States. It's all about attention. Right. And um, yeah, it, it goes back again. Again, uh, this is this is all these talking points, these ideas. They are coming from the United States. And even though she says she was born in Guatemala or whatever, it, it, I mean, it, it, the, we, we understand that from the united states we are getting people that are spreading misinformation that are from the african-american community people uh, groups like the hebrew israelites that are uh, in doc trying to indoctrinate our people we have the the wobbles or the wannabe native americans we have this uh african panamanian uh, girl she speaks spanish she's uh she's trying to spread uh this false information that the real uh, that the real natives are really black and she's in latin america she has lives and a lot of people are following her uh and then we have uh this uh latin x and this black label also coming from the united states so you so, yeah, think there there's a lot of reason why political capitalizing off of the hispanic community right now like there's like uh, yeah, a yeah, lot they, of they, they, yeah these north america these north americans of have always seen our people as naive e people easy ta easy targeted people you can all you have to do is all you have to do uh to get them in your pocket is um uh, give them pr praise their culture their food and they'll melt in your hands and they're naive like that and all you got to do is tell them how pretty they look and how delicious their, their i mean how beautiful their culture is and they'll fall for it this is i've heard this coming from the mouths of of, of these groups of people i'm not making this up okay that's an interesting take. Um, let, can we hear from a third party? I know Kenneth. Hey, you, that, Kenneth. What's up, guys? So, How Kenneth. How are you guys doing? Okay, Hi, what's Kenneth. up? Hi, Kenneth. How are you? Let me, 
I'm good. Let me pick my job from the ground real quick, Fidel. That's you know, I'm a I'm an African American. I'm a Black American. Uh, I will say this. As far as you know, certain groups, I've never heard of anyone say black people solely are the only indigenous groups of people. I would say from Christianity to Hebrews to Israelites to Hebrew Israelites to the Moorish people, I, you know, the narrative that I've always been under is that they came in all different colors and we were included in that group. Being an African-American, I will say, uh, one of the notions that we always stood for is any time period that you could think of, everybody was getting it in. I don't, I don't think it was just Native saying, or Indigenous people from whatever tribe saying, I'm only going to, you know, have children with just this tribe. It wasn't Africans saying, I'm only going to have babies with Africans. And it wasn't Europeans saying that either. Everybody was getting it in all the time. They, there may have been specific groups of people. So it was Kumbaya, right? I mean, look at us in 20... I never said it was Kumbaya, but to answer your question on the identity of indigenous people uh, and African-Americans making a stake that they're indigenous. I've never heard anyone say we're the only indigenous people. No, no. Uh, so, are... Kenneth, real quick question. You did mention you were Hispanic as well, right? Right. And you're so, as well. Right, right. Real quick question, though. Uh, Videl has been saying that there has been like a political movement lately that uh, like a lot of different individuals are trying to like capitalize politically um, by trying to like integrate into the, uh, you know, Hispanic space. But you yourself also being uh, a mix of African and Hispanic, what do you think? Like, how do you do you feel like it's harder to actually enter the space of Hispanic, uh, the Hispanic community? Do you feel like there has been discrimination or do you feel like, you know what, they don't really acknowledge? that what do you think yeah me personally i've never really tried to enter into the into the space you know Why not? I, got a, I got bigger fish to fry there's, <laughs> there's bigger things out here right? i got i got a roof to maintain i got food to put on the table i got kids to grow to raise so, i mean you know the average person ain't really having these talking points in real life the average person is just out here you know just trying to make a living you know, I, I mean, that, I, I that doesn't I, I, back up Videl's point, though. He's talking about like most people don't talk about this, though. But what do you have to say about like, you know, people trying to politically capitalize on the Hispanic community right now? Like, what do you say to that? I don't see how okay. I do see. I do see Europeans. I mean, I'm you know, me and Cal, we talked about this a long time ago. Um, I do see Europeans and I do see Asians, you know, going to Central and South America. I do see that. I do see them buying up land like crazy. I do see them encouraging Southerners to, you know, to, to help them get into places of power to get mm -hmm. land and then pushing a lot of, of, of us up, up north. So, I mean, that's... And you're in America, that? right, Kenneth? Uh, yeah, or I'm you... in Southern California. Okay, Southern California. And you're saying you're seeing Europeans do this? Like, what would you say European? What kind of European are we saying here? Uh, uh, big brands, you know, Dole is out there right now. Chiquita ah, okay. Banana is out there. The Canadians are out there. That's what I've been told. The oh, Canadians, the Canadians have been ridiculous. <laughs> uh, we still love our Canadians. We still love them, but you know, there's some, there's something going on. All right, let, let's hear from CJ because I know he never got to talk about any of this. So CJ, uh, do you got your mic on right now, bro? Uh, what do you have to say? I know you've been listening. Well, okay, your mic shut off. Hear me? Hello? I'm yeah, we can hear Hello? you now. There we go. My bad. There's two points to the whole thing, okay? And I have, in my family, I have Africa, Af African American people in my family that are mixed, uh, Latinos as well. I mean, this is this is the thing. Um, if you're asking about acceptance into a certain group. Once you are born into that group, there's no need for acceptance. You're automatically in the group. There's nothing There's nothing about that. That's the number one thing. And people get that misconception that you have to 
oh, you know, only because he's Afro Latino, he, you know, he doesn't have a part. I mean, you're you're, you're officially part of that. And anybody who says and blames that community for anything that has to do against us is misguided in a sort of way. Now, that people don't claim who they are, that's their personal opinion. I mean, as that goes, because you, you, you like you said, you can't. You, you, you can't change that on somebody. It's their personal opinion, whether what they claim. Now, if they're embarrassed by it, that's, again, that's their own mindset. Uh, but with, with everything that, that we were talking about, you know, that contributes to all that, again, it's, it's just different Remember, points of a, views. Afro-Indigenous claiming black rather than what, like, African background they come from or Haitian background. What do you say to that? Like, what do you think? You, you, that's, you that's, their, that? that's, that's their choice. That's their point of view. That's their choice. That's their opinion. That's mm -hmm. not something that we can change because it's their choice, their opinion. And again, you know, some people, that's who they are. That's who they want to be. Like being Spaniard. You can be Spaniard if you want Spaniard, if you're actually mixed. Well, well, you know. What so Fidel saying was saying. If we want to be indigenous, we can be indigenous. No, 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 no. Uh, we're talking about like the the colorisms. Of uh, Fidel was saying like, hey, nobody even uses that in, in actual Mexico and South America. Nobody uses that. That's an American thing. That's an American, right. that's an American take where it's people, very American right, thing. Where people identify as colors. What Fidel was saying is that, hey, she kind of ousted herself by using colorisms and claiming to be like indigenous and also like Africa, Afro indigenous. What do you say to that, CJ? Like, um, because Fidel is saying that there's like a uh, political um, exploitation going on against Hispanics right now. And I know you've been listening. So what do you have to say about all that? Uh, an exploitation against us. And I mean, that sounds like, like, again, that sounds like an agenda that. Who, Fidel's uh, agenda? Is it his nationalistic agenda, or what do you think? It, 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 like I said, it's his opinion, but it also could be an agenda from somebody else that's pushing it. You know, I, I could say one thing and then spread it out to multiple people. Can it be true? Can it be something that's happening at this very moment? Uh, possibly not, because some of the stuff that's been spread around TikTok or especially in other communities, uh, about 50 to 60 percent of chance it is BS. Um, what is really happening right now in the Latino and in the Af in the Afro community is very different. Uh, there is still systemic racism, among others, that are happening still to this day. But what he was saying, um, in, within the community, because I've been part of a large community as well, I have never heard of such a thing. I mean, it could be something, uh, maybe something very small, minimal, where it's not very mm. spread yet, and that's probably why I haven't heard it. Or it's just something that's not really, you know. Right. So you're saying like this is this is just something that um, since I guess Videl is just being exposed to it in these small pockets, it's not really like considered like a viable movement. That, that's essentially what you're saying, correct? Yes, that's exactly okay. what I'm saying, because, yeah. you know, I could like I told you, I could say one thing in my own home and it doesn't mean that it's actually happening around. You know, like that's that's the right. explanation. Yeah. What so, about yeah. you, Roxanne? I know you've had your hand up for a while. Well, what do you have to add to this? And please. Yeah, I want to ask Martha a question, a genuine question. So, Martha, and I think Kelly has the same sentiments from what we spoke up in the past. Um, Martha, like someone like me, I was born in Mexico. I have a lot of family that's still out there, and I'm the first generation to come out here with my parents to America. But um, I wanted to learn more about my lineage, and if I had indigenous roots, I did do a DNA test along with my dad. I've talked to a couple of my uncles. Uh, I was 34%, my dad's 38%, and I'm still looking into if there's a family tree we can formulate, because I did have three uncles that said we do have uh, um, indigenous roots, and but we, we there's a disconnect in where it goes. So is that, do you think um, I can claim that I have indigenous line lineage, or am I not supposed to? Based on one question, what question so are you just like? Said, you just said I have lineage. You, you said I have lineage. There's a difference between saying... I have lineage and I am indigenous in this moment. And to the end of reconnection, to that end, yeah, you are starting that process. You have checked to see, you are looking through your family history. And what I can suggest from having worked with people who have gone through the process of reconnecting is that you can look for what community your family likely would have came from, triangulate that down, and then do outreach to that community to start to build that connection and rebuild that cultural connection. Because a lot of information about these communities isn't widely available to the public. 
it just takes like a bit of, yeah, the person in the comments are, you, you can reconnect. You just have to take the steps to do it. And I'm more than happy to send you resources if you're looking for information on a specific group and information on how to contact them. And what's your rebuttal to that, Roxana? I really appreciate her answering my question and I would love that information later. Yes, yeah, gotcha. just um, have a send me a DM. For you. Because I'm, I'm curious of what, if it's just an, um, because they're American. So here's what I've noticed. So um, to answer something you had put into chat, no, I do not discount that, that there are uh, quote unquote Afro-Indigenous people that are um, being discriminated against. I'm not saying that at all. Here's what I do find interesting um, is is that so we have a group that that's already let's say in Mexico, right? Um, that are uh, you know Afro Latino or Afro Indigenous, and they are being discriminated against. Against, but we have like um, an influx of African Americans that are going over to. Um, Mexico, and I could show you video after video after video of them, you know, asking other African Americans to also come over because they said that they are not being, they feel very welcomed and they're not being discriminated against like they are in the United States. Do you think that they're getting sort of, I don't know if a pass is the right word, but do you think that um, maybe it is because not that they're African American, but the fact that they're American and they're not having the same experience as those who have already like born and raised in Mexico. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good question. There is privilege in being American and being an American in Mexico. There is privilege in being an American with American money in Mexico. And that becomes a question and the term that is commonly used here is positionality. It becomes a question of, well, then where does that place within the hierarchy? As a black person, you can still experience anti-blackness, but still experience privilege from being American. You can experience anti-blackness, but still experience privilege from being a class in a different socioeconomic class. So that nuance is relevant. To that end, and the counter example that I point to when discussing about race in Latin America, not Latin America as a whole, but in Mexico specifically, is the Afro-Mexican population, which has long struggled for recognition well before the influx of African Americans, well before the influx of African Americans, have been struggling to be recognized in this country. We were, Afro Mexicans weren't even included on the census for years. And they have said openly, and it's a translation of what they have said is, we exist, we're here, we occupy this area, we have a culture, and we proudly say we're Mexicans. Those are phrases that they have said. And they said that they have, they acknowledge both the fact that they are of African descent, that we are of African descent, but we're Mexicans because we were born here and we will built this country because they are both. Thus, the hybridization of the term Afro-Mexican, it is acknowledgement of this is where I have come from. This is where my ancestral roots are, that I am black, that I am African. But you want, you want to use black or African and have an issue with either term. But in their specific case, they want to say they have roots in Africa. But I am also Mexican in the sense that my people have been here for generations. This is where we have built our community. This is where we have built our culture, <laughs> which is why you see the development of those hybridized terms. And that's, again, why I was saying earlier that it's disingenuous to try to frame those as something that is just somehow being colonially or superficially imposed by the United States onto Latin America, because these are movements that have developed within their own spaces, but just not everybody is necessarily exposed to them. And again, part of the reason why people say this is, well, why would you want to use a term like Afro-Indigenous? Why? Porque quiere ser Afro-Indigena? Porque quieres usar palabras como así? Right? Mm -hmm. So, Videl, what do you... It does matter because some people yeah, let me say do something. find value, as the Afro-Mexican <clears throat> community has been documented to do, in recognizing both, all parts of themselves. Both Martha, the I thought you added the a Afro period in there. And in the other aspect, whether it is Mexican, yeah. whether it is the bother Latino, whether it is also the indigeneity of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Videl, so, what, what do you have to say to all that? I mean, you've been hearing this yeah, back and forth. Uh, you, even, even Kelly sort of, like, clarified it a little bit, but what do you have to say to yeah. that? 
Yeah, yeah. This whole thing that uh, Afro and uh, Mexicans aren't getting recognition. This idea of getting recognition doesn't exist over there. It comes from the United States. Every they get recognition as Mexicans. Okay, Me- they are Mexicans, just like uh, Indigenous people are, are Mexicans, just like European-looking people are Mexicans. They're all Mexicans. Okay, that's how they identify over there. Now, uh, if you're saying that um, Afro Mexican people are on their own in Mexico saying that they want recognition. They've been saying they want recognition. I've seen a countless videos of African Americans going to Latin America and, and Mexico, and they're the ones that are putting these ideas in their heads. They're the ones that are saying, hey, so how do they treat you over here? Do you get recognition? Man, you're, you need to get recognition. They are the ones that are planting the ideas in these people's heads. You guys, a lot of your people have created this, and then you, you pull back, and you point, and, and then you reconstruct this whole narrative that they are the ones that are do- that are asking for help, and therefore you guys have to come. Bullshit! I know this whole story; it's all false. They're so, Mexicans, and that's all they are. Fidel, can I can I play devil's advocate? Go ahead. Um, man. Regardless of if that is like actually happening, you got Africans that are coming down here and just trying to like put that in their head or whatever. It, but isn't that still a viable idea for like Afro Mexicans to just sort of kind of stand up for their rights and make themselves known to like, hey, I am African Mexican and I demand dignity. And to also, I also want to ask the question to CJ mentioning and throwing this in. He's saying like, you're just in this pocket, this echo chamber. And he, it's like, maybe it's not even an actual movement or it's not even true. What like, what do you say to these two questions? Look, listen, man, I'm going to tell you something, man. Um, I, I was going to ask uh, Marta a question really fast before I forget. Marta, do you think that black people can be racist? Marta? Why are you asking me that question? Because I know it's a leading question. Yeah. Based on everything you've said so uh, far, do you, do you, what's your do, point? Do you Just believe point, black yeah. people can be, do you think black people can be racist? Fidel, just get to your point. I know this is a leading question. That's uh, my point. Somewhere. My point. My point is asking you a question, and I would like you to answer it, please. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say it now. Fidel, you're gonna say no. Okay. Okay. So I, I wish. I, 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 I wish the uh, if if, if the African community was so was so was so, was so, was so preoccupied with people's rights, what they would what they would do is they would they would check their own people here in the United States because a lot of African Americans are very racist towards Indigenous people. All right, because you are one, Martha. Because you think like one, Martha, and you want to shut me up because you don't like what's coming out of my mouth. No. That's why you're Martha. interrupting Martha. me, Martha. Martha. You don't Martha. like me Chill. saying these Chill. things, Martha. Chill. You don't Chill. like Chill. me saying these Martha. things, right? Martha, we gotta give we gotta give Fidel his like his little piece because he has two questions to she answer. She wants to interrupt me. Yeah, she okay. wants to interrupt Fidel. me because she doesn't like me telling you. the truth. Okay. Okay. So she doesn't okay. want to respond so, to the so, question. So, but can we move on to the two questions I asked you then? Me or him? Okay. Which one? What, what were they again? So the first question is. Uh, even though there are Africans, like whatever, like there could be Africans actually doing it. And what if they are? But isn't that still a viable problem that is actually happening in like the Afro-Mexican community where they want to at least stand up for their rights and they want to stop having discrimination against them? That is question number one. Question number two <laughs> is CJ's question where he said like, hey, I think Fidel is just in this little echo chamber, this little pocket. I haven't seen it personally. And maybe he just sees in these small areas and he's just blowing it up to be this big thing that's not really there. So those two, those are the two questions. No, yeah, look, man, uh, of course they have the right to do it, uh, it to, to, um, exercise their rights and ask for, I guess in this case, recognition, right, um, that they exist. Um, they, they have every right to do so, you know, nobody's stopping them, you know. I just, I just wish that, uh, African Americans would have had that same energy for the Native Americans here in the United States when they didn't have any recognition. That's all. And answer CJ's question. Uh, yeah, CJ, no, I mean, you tend to ha- be one sided when it comes to a lot of things, man. No, it is a thing. It's not just a small group of people. Uh, actually, I believe that all of these movements, uh, all of these movements that are coming from their community are tied to an Afrocentrist tree. A 
lot of these pro-black movements, which come in the shape of whether they're spreading misinformation as the he black Hebrew Israelites or the Wabos or the or the native the, the black Africans that believe that they are the real Native Americans. Uh, they're also spreading uh, this the colorist label in Latin America, causing division. I mean, it's it's not a small thing, man. It's it's pretty big. It's pretty big. All right. Um, okay. yeah, to the to, to to the point where you even have a celebrity like Ice Cube promoting uh, indigenous erasure. So if, if you got Ice Cube and you got thousands of people supporting him, it's a problem, man. So to, just to clarify to the point of the panel, so Videl does back up the 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 act of Afro Mexicans, you know, defending their rights and also like yeah, defending their dignity. So that that is, I guess, like a clarified statement. We got the clarification on that. But CJ, what do you say? He's telling you that this isn't just some little pocket thing. This is actually well blown up. And he's saying that it, this isn't just some like made up thing. He's saying that this is real and this is vivid. What do you have to say to that? Well, I have a lot of key points in this. And one of them, when he got upset and, ex you know, expressed himself and started getting louder and louder, you know what they say, your actions speak louder than your words. Well, that just spoke, spoke out really loud. And that, that word that came out of your actions was called hate. Uh, and unless you don't want to admit it, that's your own pride. And then secondary... I wasn't the only one when you say, my voice, wait, 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 let me talk. So when you talk about Ice Cube, the same guy who said F the police, I didn't know he was a political figure. I didn't even know he was running for office or anything within the government. Uh, that's a nice point of view you took from, by the way. And yeah, I might be one-sided, but this is the reason I'm one-sided. I'm going to explain to you one thing, Okay. When you experience discrimination, you don't like it yourself, correct? And then when you spread discrimination to somebody else, they don't like it either. So at what point do you become the oppressor? The, and then the, so then now you're becoming both and you contradict yourself. You don't like when people come at you di indifferently. You're, you're, you're against, you know, people mixing. You're against other different types. So again, you're either a Mexican nationalist or you're just, you know, like I said, you're either just blunt, plain blunt, the R word, which a lot of hate, a lot of people hate to hear that. I mean, you expressed it yourself. I don't have anything personal against you, but this is my point of view based That's on That's a your powerful accusation the, there, CJ. Exposed. It is. But the way he's been talking and channeling himself, I believe the chat and everybody in these boxes will come to an agreement of what he's been saying. And it's just like I said, when one, when multiple minds come together and point the finger at you, guess what? Guess who's in the wrong? You, buddy, because that's a lot of minds versus one person. Okay, so okay, many okay. Well, can be right. Wait, 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 they can all be wrong. They can all be wrong, and I can be right. That's 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 what the same person would say. Stick to the point. Can you land the plane right now so then we can? I just I just did with the whole. Let's get a rebuttal. Let's because there was a lot thrown out there. Let's get a rebuttal from Fidel because he's got a lot of things to say. Okay, let's get a rebuttal. Let's because there was a lot thrown out there. Let's get a rebuttal from Fidel because he's got a lot to just kind of address. No, yeah. Yeah, so I wasn't the only one raising my voice. And what's going to happen in this case, of course, uh, there's a lot of people I can see on the comment section that are backing um, Martha up. And usually what, what the tactics that they use is they, they gaslight people, right? They're going to come and accuse me and guilt shame me, guilt shame me of being racist, this, this and that. I mean, it's the same thing we see. It's getting old already. They're going to use the victim card. They're going to use the race card. It's just manipulation at this point. And I'm, I'm just surprised that people like CJ hasn't uh, been able to wake up and see that uh how they've been using us and manipulating us with with the race and victim card it's a bunch of bull crap they're going to latin america they're causing this they're trying to destabilize us they're trying to divide us with these labels and the only thing that they're trying to do is put themselves on a pedestal because it's all about money sex and power to them that's all well, it well, is well, CJ, okay, cj's bringing trying. up why did you raise your voice against martha that time like what well, made you well, feel because so she, like she was raising my because no because she was raising her voice too so she was raising her voice i raised my voice Okay, so let's hear from Carolina because I know she's probably like opposition. So, um, uh, Carolina, what do you have to to add to all this? And you're, no, you're I just um, first of all, I don't like how G CJ said that we were all going to be in agreement with him. When I'm like, whoa, I just, I just, uh, I don't. I'm assuming that it's um, is it the Afrocentrism conversation? Yeah, yeah, this is what this is okay. about. Okay, so. It, first of all, he is guilt shaming Fidel. He's he's telling him that it's hate speech when it's not. 
um it's actually a very very important topic that is very that that basically uh we get censored a lot okay it's not like a topic that that we are able to um speak out about and you know it it really is uh sad that a lot of, i've seen it i've seen it with a lot of live videos with real people you know it's not bots you know coming out um and uh you know with the the topic a topic of afro afrocentrism you know not just taking on indigenous uh communities but they are also um taking on other communities right they 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 claim to be cleopatra right or they claim to be um uh the real omics right yeah. and and to me it's it's not fair that that if we speak up about this topic that it's hate speech um that's really really not fair and um to accuse fidel of uh hate hate speech it's not right i mean last time he was getting wasn't cj getting um reported for you know um basically using the r e you know the r word yeah but l let's not bring in other that's, lies that's in not here. that's not hate that's not that's relax that's relax, different. I, think, Re relax okay, CJ. I think to me it, that would that's me, different that's, that's one word relax, versus one something you're spreading. spreading you don't gotta defend okay. yourself caroline let's not bring in other live activity CJ. yeah let's not bring missing, in other live activity into this. missing correct information <laughs> relax yeah, cj yeah, relax because it doesn't suit you right it wouldn't you it wouldn't bro you, you're you you're exciting with him cj chill Okay. You wouldn't so, be able to so if like you him. talk, excuse me. So let's all be really respectful, and I want to get back to, eventually get back to Kenneth too, because I want his input on yeah, it. But, yeah. Um, but let's be respectful, or I'm going to drop you from the panel because we can't we can't hear you guys if you're actually speaking over each other. So one at a time, be respectful. Thank you. So Carolina, you got the floor. But um, let's not bring in other activities I mean, that happen. Yeah, in our it, lives. I think I think um, I think uh, the Afrocentrism, you know, claiming that they're the real native Indians, it really is disrespectful to the indigenous or native native Indians here in the northern hemisphere of the U.S. or claiming that they're the real omics. That is very uh, that that that's very disrespectful, too. And they they know and they they know they're not, but they still claim it um they will say that um there's there's proof they want to just they want to come to the communities as allies but then they want to be the the one that colonizes right that colonizes the other the other ethnic groups and mm -hmm. uh that's to me that's just it's not right it's not right and I, i've seen it and and i mean uh i guess it, it is an important topic and an important issue that needs to be spoken about. And even, even, and then it's just, it's not even Native Indians that talk about it, right? But I know, I think Native Indians are more aware that this is happening, that this issue of Afrocentrism, that they're the real Native Indians, it's happening. Um, and I, I don't think a lot of Mexicans from Mexico are aware of that. They're not aware. And, and I think that, uh, Fidel is, uh, bringing awareness to Mexicans and it's very important. Carolina. They're already doing it to Native Indians. Can I ask you a question? What about, um, people like CJ that'll say like, Hey, you know, we're not seeing this in the forefront. Like this is just like a little pocket thing you're seeing on social media. No, and this, no, this isn't the it majority. Is in the it is in the forefront because I. Why do you actually, say that? I saw, I, there's, uh ice cube he's one he literally has claimed uh to be the the real natives yeah so th this is a becoming a forefront issue and it's not spoken about because again like i said we already know in the mainstream media who is allowed to have a bigger voice right it, we mm -hmm. already know that in in schools where what are we only learning about we're just learning about the holocaust and martin luther king and that's it so we're in and like the and they'll come in and be like oh well yeah well you know in reality it's your problem if you don't teach your kids uh uh real history no i that's why i have homeschooled my children okay mm. so it's like fine okay so don't complain about crt because you're basically doing it to us he they mm. they do it to the indigenous community or they do it to mexicans mexico's not really aware of that this is happening but you but i know that native indians are, are here in the northern hemisphere they're more aware of a lot of things of that of what is okay. happening so, Roxana, what do you have to add to this? But I hope you have something to add rather than just a question. Okay. 
question. I don't have no. anything to add because I'm sorry, Carolina, but when you speak, I really hope one day you go to college and get some education. Go ahead, Kenneth, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, well, you know hold what? On, I have on. a bachelor's that's a power, degree. Hold on. Okay, that, that's Barbie, a very powerful statement. I have statement. a bachelor's degree. So, yeah, so let's, you know what? I let's come not out attack some, someone and, and assume that they're not educated. She just said she has a bachelor's degree. So let's. Yeah. We have Let's to be aware, be aware of the we can, odd hammer. We can speak attack. our opinions without like being disrespectful. Yeah. Can I say so really fast? Can I say something really fast? Uh, all if you're Latino and, and you're listening to this, it is your duty, your job to spread, to tell everybody in your families in Latin America what the United States is doing by using African Americans and spreading misinformation in our countries. Okay. If you're Latino, again, have these conversations with your family, spread the word. We can't let these people come in into what they consider their backyard and do whatever they want. Okay, it's our responsibility to put a stop to this shit. Um, okay, so Kenneth, wh what do you have to add to all this? Yeah, hey, I'm trying to figure out what uh, black people in America have to gain from. Uh, I mean, what is this like? We're trying to get dual citizenship. Well, Carolina so, did actually bring a lot of hot points. She did. So mention there's. There's been a, uh, I'll answer him. So there's, there has been a group, which I don't think it's a large group, um, of people, but the, the problem with this is, so there's been a group on, um, TikTok and, uh, they are, they are, uh, you know, um, descendants of, of Africans. They're African American, but they're claiming to be, the real indigenous people of the Americas, right? Although they refuse to take DNA tests. And um, so they've been having, you know, lives and uh, sort of attacking the indigenous uh, community. Now this is primarily in, in the US. Um, there has been a group um, that are, they claim to be uh, the real Israelites. They actually have gone on to native lands and, and caused problems in their communities. Um, so this has been like an ongoing growing issue, you know, and we've been having lives to kind of counteract that. And even other African Americans um, have been having lives discounting and disputing, you know, um, this group of, of people. But um, so that's basically is what I don't know if you've seen any of that, Kenneth, but that's what's been going on lately. Yeah, the first part, as far as, you know, you know, earlier I made a statement, uh, black people in America, African Americans, we're not just by way of Africa. We know this. Uh, the claim I have seen uh, maybe one or two lives on TikTok that even I kind of like, got to squint my eyes at because when I do hear black people make the claim that we are the true, I'm not sure. I've never really been in there to talk to them because uh, it, it, it just, it really doesn't entertain me at all. And I think for most black people, it doesn't, but I will say uh, black people in America, high and large, we know that we are a highly mixed group of people and we just come out dark. So, you know, my stance on that is what I say, I am the true indigenous person of the Americas. I, I don't know if I would coin it like that. I would say I'm, I'm one of you guys. You guys are one of me, you know, to some degree. But to disc, you know, to, to throw a disclaimer out there that you guys are not, therefore I am. I don't know any black people doing that. Now, as far as black people going to South or Central America and causing havocs and in uh in communities in Hispanic and Latin communities. I don't know about that one. I know most black people I know, uh on I'm just I'm gonna throw this out there. Most black people I know say there's only two races, black and white. And if you're Hispanic, you're either black or white. If you're an American, you're either black or white. That's just the way black people see life. Do you think that's we correct, though? Well, we don't look Kelly, at ourselves, Kelly, though. Can I ask him? 
Yeah. Do you, do you think that is a, a more accurate way of thinking where there's just kind of like this? Uh, sorry, hold up. So do you think that's a more accurate way of thinking of just thinking of like colorisms where there's just two shades? It's just either black or white? Me personally? Yes. No, but, I'm, but I do understand their stance. You know, I mean, in their world, that's what they see. Mm -hmm. So when they see Hispanic, and I'm going to be honest, I've never asked any Hispanic person this, or I'll say Mexican for that matter. I genuinely think Mexican is going to be a race one day. I sit back and analyze what's happening. And I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if Mexican became the sixth race. I see. So not even, even though, anyway, uh, you don't even see us as a race right now. Mexicans? Yeah. Um, I see the push. I most definitely see the push, and that's but, not anything that I've ever seen. currently, right now, you don't see us as a race. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. There's no judgment there. I'm just saying. No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm being honest. I, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. That's understandable. It's not something that you know. But like I say, when I do see it, I'm like, hmm. It's, it's a question that raises in my mind, like, is Mex mm -hmm. are, is Mex are Mexicans trying to create their own race? So if you're telling me that that's what's happening, this is the first time in my life I've ever heard of such thing, but it does make sense. No, it's an interesting take because you were mentioning how like many uh, uh, black Americans just see things kind of like black and white, you know, uh, no pun intended. But at the same time, there could be a lot of black Americans that don't even see Mexican as its own race. I think that's right. also kind of interesting as well. Uh, just to just to kind of cook a well, little Mexican bit. Mexican is not a race. It's it's a, a nationality. Right, right. Right. Of course. But, but it, essentially, we we are kind of setting ourselves apart as like our own individual race. Right. Like, well, what I will say is this, though. One thing that I have not heard or come across in like. Man, I don't know, a couple of decades is the, the, the pushback to want to be a Spaniard. I know a lot of Hispanic, you know, before the idea and the talk of being indigenous, as far as I can remember, uh, Hispanic and Latinos, they were more so concerned with the idea of being a Spaniard. Yeah. So, you know, can I I'm say not quite... something? I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, kind of, but I need to address that. So... If I see anyone in the chat, I, I've been reading some of these comments. If I see anyone in the chat being racist, I am going to block you automatically. No questions asked. I'm not even going to warn you. This is your warning. I do not stand for any kind of racism. So that needs to stop right now. What do you consider racist? What did you see in the chat? Um, hold on. Let me scroll. Right now, I can't even find a stupid thing. Could you just give us an example? Yeah, they were talking about um, um, them being uh, calling them out for being black and then calling them boy. Oh, okay. Uh, so, um, Martha, if you can reactivate your mic, I know there was a lot uh, thrown in there, but I wanted to ask you a specific question. Uh, let me know when your mic is back on. Huh? Okay. Um, there was a, um, some opposition talking points that were brought up from Carolina and Fidel. They're saying like there is sort of like this Afrocentrism where they're starting to claim other people's, you know, ethnicities. They're starting to claim other people's origins. Do you acknowledge that that is happening? Yeah, there are Afrocentrics. But again, what the do you point that was being made before. What do you say to apprehensiveness to that? Like, what do you say to that? I notice that we have people that are Hispanic, like Fidel and Carolina. What do you say to their apprehensiveness to that? In right the same now? way that I get frustrated with the widespread issue of white pretendians, I get frustrated with black pretendians. It's an issue either way. Because what it relies on is a fundamental failure to acknowledge the history and the context in which these things are occurring. Mm -hmm. So, and what would you say to like... You're, you're, are you saying like, okay, the African American community is just like, they're not acknowledging history? Is that what you're when saying? When did I say the African American community as a whole? Oh, I see. So, so you're saying that. Afrocentrics, much like in the same way that I can deal with, say, a different population, right? Mm -hmm. In the same way that there are Mexicans who are racist to me, that doesn't mm -hmm. make all Mexicans racist. 
Right. In the same way that there are African Americans who are lost and are, for some reason, beyond my understanding, Afrocentrics. Not all African Americans are to blame for that. Not all African Americans are Afrocentrics. So I don't want to make that kind of generalization. And yes, CAG, there are white pretenders. If you want to, I can send you some famous examples because they're out there. Um, there was somebody in the comments. So what about uh, when people criticize you and say that you are just like them? In what way? That so that's you are... the critique for me. Like, in other words, that they're just trying to say, like, what part of the little... Okay, can you mute yourself? Okay. Like, when people say that you are just coming in to try to claim these different ethnic backgrounds, like, you're not really, uh, you're not really this, or you're just trying to push that movement, uh, what, what do you say to that? If people want to be pressed about the fact that I was born half Maya and half Black, then that's their choice. At the end of the day, I know where I was born. I know the community I'm involved with. I know the community I live in now. And if people want to have issues with the fact that I choose to be both, then that I choose to acknowledge that I am both because that is what I am, mm -hmm. then go ahead. I, that's very, that's a very different thing to misrepresent the fact that I claim both the fact that I am indigenous in the sense that I have grown up in this community. I am from this community. I was born into this community. My father is from this community. My grandmother's from this community mm -hmm. with people who can't understand that their ancestors came from Africa and want to pretend to be the original Native Americans or for white people who do similar phenomena who want to pretend to be Native American mm -hmm. is disingenuous and a bad faith comparison. So uh, obviously, uh, Marta is also saying that, that, you know, that that's also disingenuous of them, too. So she's not siding with them. She's also trying to clarify with the panel that she does believe it is like a porn is not something that is correct to do. Uh, Marta, what kind of question would you send to the opposition right now? Like, what kind of question would you ask right now? Basically, I'm just sort of interested in listening to their points that they're making. OK, so you just want to hear them out. OK, it, um, so to the opposition of uh, Videl or Carolina, do you have anything to say right now to based upon what everybody has said? You heard from Kenneth. You heard from Martha. Do you guys have anything to add right now? Uh, no, not really. I just I wish Martha would have answered the question I made her earlier. That's all. OK, what question was that? Uh, that if she thinks black people can be racist. Okay. So in other words, I think Martha doesn't want to do what's called uh, singular questioning, which is sort of like, uh, it's this, it's a debate tactic, which uh, pulls people into sort of like a fallacy. It's an either or fallacy. And I think that Martha's, she doesn't want to be falling into that. So she, she just really wants you to get to like the point of where you're trying to lead her to and just ask that question. What would be the question to that? I'm not trying to lead any into anything, man. I'm no, just listening. I think that's, just that's pretty much it. I see. So, in other words, you want to hear to see if she can actually admit that black people can also be racist as well. No, I don't. I, I just I want to know her perspective on that. That's all. Whether she whatever she answers, it's. I mean, that's her answer. Okay. I mean, I just at least just an answer. That's all. Okay, Martha, would you like to answer that? You don't have to, but I'm just ask. I'm just saying. The reason why I don't want to answer it is that it's clear to me from the conversation that's occurred that Fidel asked a bad faith line of questions in order to prevent a bad faith argument misrepresenting what I say. Thus, I don't want to answer the question because I know the way this is going to go with Fidel. So I don't want to answer the question. Okay, that's fair. Uh, Kira, wait, did Carolina drop? Carolina, did you have anything to add to this? Because I know that you stayed mute for a while. Yeah. Um, you, do you want me to make a statement or a, like an opinion or do you want me to ask her a question? Well, you don't have to ask her a question. You heard oh, a lot. Yeah. You pretty much heard a, a lot yeah. of different takes right now. Yeah, no, um, I believe that, um, honestly, I believe that anyone, um, well, I, I don't, uh, I'm just saying that if, if uh, the white tea people are able to be uh, racist, then, then the, you know, B-L-A-C-K people are also able to be racist. That's it. And, and that's including, um, you know, um, other skin colors, I guess, because I don't, you know, I don't like, I specifically don't like talking about th this topic. Um, but, but, you know, I guess it's, it's important, I guess, in society, but, uh, or, or we should just, um, you know, be allowed to just say that nobody is, right? We should just be like, okay, either we all are or nobody is, so we can, we are able to actually have uh, real conversations without being censored. That's it. That's just my opinion. 
Okay. Now there's, before you mute yourself, there's going to be a lot more takes coming along. Is there anything you'd like to throw into the mix right now? Because, you know, you may not get a chance for a while. Yeah, because oh, yeah, okay. we have two new people that came yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, uh, yeah, no, it, to me, I do believe that it is becoming a prevalent topic um, as I, I am scrolling a lot more and I, I am seeing a lot of uh, Afrocentrism trying to take on, uh, like I said, other communities, especially, as, you know, and I, I already discussed it, but like the all mix, you know, so so now they're 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 already pushing their way down, you know, saying that uh, they've already they they were already there in in uh, South America. So they're mm -hmm. they're trying to connect Africa with South America and that that's the reason that they've that's how they were always here in the Americas. That's an, uh, another argument that they're pushing. So, I mean, I, at first, um, you know, it's just uh, I wasn't so aware of this. Um, but you know what? I, I am seeing it a lot. I am seeing it. And I think it, it does have, have it has to do with the um, I believe it has to do with the United States that is kind of gaslighting everybody to not talk about this topic and kind of um, protect uh, uh, one specific racial group that um, I don't want, you know, because uh, because I guess it's censorship. Right. But but, you know, I, I like I said, I, I mean, if if there if if nobody is protected, then OK, I get it. So that way we can have real discussions in the community and society. But if one racial group is just protected, that's not fair. We cannot really advance to um, having a, a productive conversation to make this uh, Afrocentrism um, to stop, you know. But OK, thank you so much for allowing me in the panel. Thank you, Kelly, so much. I'm going to uh, move down now. OK, thank you for that, Carolina. Um, 505, do you have something to add? You've heard a lot that was going on right here in the panels. Um, do you have some sort of comment? Because I know you're here. You jumped in the box. Yeah, um, actually, I do. I just wanted to say um, I, I don't want to say anything bad about anyone. So I just want to talk about my experience without you know, saying anything negative against what other panelists said. Yeah, go ahead. But um, so I have spent the majority of my life in Mexico since I was very small, back and forth, back and forth for long periods of time. Half my family is there. I'm married to someone who's a Mexican citizen, so we go back and forth a lot. I'm mixed race. Um, my mom's family is Native American and Hispanic, and my dad's family is um, Black and Native American. So when I'm in the U.S., it's the only place I really ex like have experienced extreme racism where people have said things to my face or yelled at me at my job, things like that. In Mexico, where we go, um, Acapulco area, Costa Chica, there is a large Afro-Indigenous population who, yes, have been trying to get recognition. I have family and friends who are very um, politically involved and are trying to get recognition, which the government finally did recognize Afro um, Latinos as an actual group of people instead of just pretending like they don't exist or they're just there and ignore them. But um, in Mexico, I'm just another woman with a whole bunch of kids, just like every other woman who lives in the colonia with a whole bunch of kids. I've never been treated different. No one um, even knows I'm a U.S. citizen unless I tell them. So my experience there, and I have seen, you know, like we have a house in Acapulco. So I see a lot of tourists from the USA, from Canada, um, sometimes from England. And yes, there has been a lot of tourists who are um, African-American, African-Canadian, um, African-British. Um, I've met some people from Nigeria. And people who settle there after they've come to visit have all pretty much, it's been the same thing. They don't experience the racism in the way that they do in their home countries. No one says anything to their face. Even so the ones that do speak some Spanish enough to understand if you're talking about them, they don't have someone walk up to you. No one wants to touch your hair or call your names or comment on the color of your skin or your facial features or tell you to go home. It's more of a welcoming environment. And I think that's why there's a lot of um, creators and influencers now who do make videos. A lot of people have moved to like Cancun. 
um, to Merida, Yucatan, those places, because they feel more welcome. They, no one, you know, they don't feel like a complete foreigner. They do understand that they are in the, you know, they are in a host country. It's not their country. They have not become citizens, anything like that. But the experience of being black in Mexico, and yes, there are some areas where there are people who do not like you if they see your face black. But fortunately for me, you know, we are in the Costa Chica area, and also we have a house in Veracruz, R and there is a- Wood Ruff, can you mute yourself? Oh there yeah, a I'll lot of, um, I'm sorry about that. Oh, it, you know, there's just a lot of, there's, there's Afro-Cuban community in the Veracruz area. So there are Afro-Latinos in both places that we have houses in. So I've had a very good experience, but I've been all over Mexico and I've never, ever had anybody say anything or be mean to me. And Spanish is my first language. Mm -hmm. So if someone says something, I'm going to know what they're saying unless they say it in, in a dialect that I don't understand. Because, you know, I do speak an indigenous dialect, but not from not from Mexico, from the U.S. So if they say something to me, maybe I wouldn't understand that. But no one has ever in my entire life been mean, rude, brought up my race. No one actually cares. If I'm mean to someone and I was mean once, I heard about that. I heard about that from the neighbors and stuff because what I, they said what I said was mean. But nobody ever called me anything racial. They just didn't like what I had said. And I was like, okay, I guess I got to tone my tongue down and, and apologize to the person that I was kind of mean to. Hmm. What but, about uh, when people say that this is just coming from North America? Like this is just the, the, the Americans from North America, the black Americans that are coming and they're bringing it to Mexico. And that's what's pushing this ideology. Say the U.S. instead of North America. All right, U.S. But what, what do you um, say to that? I don't, you know, I don't think it's true. I don't see... I mean, in, well, in Mexico, there's like, I think, I think I read in the paper there that there was like, they believe maybe over a million undocumented tourists from, you know, people that came in from the U.S., Canada, other places. And, you know, they're just there. When Mexico is not like the U.S., they're not building a wall. They're not saying, if you guys weren't born here, you got to go. Um, there's not that whole, I don't think that groups of Americans moving to Mexico or spending time there vacationing is causing the problem. Gentrification, of course, happens anywhere. Any time can happen in any country when someone with more money from somewhere else or even your own country comes in and changes things up. But I don't think that there's like, um, I, I think that the bigger issue in the United States is people are really, really worried. And I can say the United States because I'm sitting at my house in California right now because my house in Acapulco was kind of, was heavily damaged with the hurricane, so we came back. Wow. But um, here in the U.S., it's more, um, I think people feel like they have a free pass regardless of what their race is. They could be the color of snow, they could not be the color of snow. They could be any color in between. And it, people feel emboldened that they can just say whatever they want to other people who they perceive to be different from themselves based on the color or based on the hair texture or based on national origin or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I think people are just more emboldened in the U.S. You know, they'll just walk up to a stranger and tell you something. And, and I noticed in Latin America, people are still... People are hesitant. No one will walk up to you and just be like, you dirty so-and-so because they don't like yeah. the way you look. They won't say anything to you. You know, maybe they keep it in their head. Maybe they think bad things about me. I don't know. But I feel like it's 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 the U.S. I can't say about Canada because I've never been to Canada. Yeah. But I can, I've been all over the U.S. because I was in the military. So, okay. I mean, it's the U.S. The U.S. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. Um, you have more, you've experienced more um, racism in the U.S. opposed to Mexico? Correct. Correct. In Mexico, I'm just another woman. Over here, um, you know, like if I'm at home in New Mexico where I'm from, I'm just another, you know, I, well, as a kid, I was just another res kid running around, you know, barefoot. There is no no differentiation between me or anybody else. Once I left New Mexico and I start going around, going to different places in the country, that's when pe I realized, like, people let me know. I mean, I knew that I was mixed race, but people really brought it to my face and to my attention and made me know it and made it seem like it was a bad thing. Like, like blackness is negative. Okay. It's, you know, it's not really negative. And, you know... 
I, I just, but people believe that and people will are emboldened to say that to your face. So thank you for that. Uh, Woodruff, do you have anything to add? You've heard a lot that was going on. You, I know there's a reason why you jumped in this box. Uh, yeah. What would you like to add to all this? Oh, uh, uh, I heard somebody said, can black, black Americans be racist? Mm-hmm. No, black, but yeah, black Americans can't be racist because right. in order for you to, in order for you to be racist, you have to have a, a, a certain amount of power to change the direction of another, of another culture. So you don't, we don't, we don't hold another, uh, enough power to change the direction where a person lives, uh, what grocery store that lives in their community. We don't hold that type of power. Now we can be prejudiced. Yes, we can be prejudiced as hell, but racist, we can, we can never be cause we don't, we don't have, we don't have the power to, to really affect anybody. So Woodruff, um, there is this, the definition has been changed of what racism means. I was going to ask that right now. Yeah. Wait, (laughs) Rivido. So the definition has been changed. I remember the old encyclopedias actually had the most correct term to it, but then it's been changed in Webster's dictionary. Uh, racism, essentially what it used to mean in the old encyclopedias is it, it doesn't, it doesn't mean prejudice. There's a difference between prejudice and racism. And racism means you actually believe there's an echelon of race. One is superior in the higher of the echelon. And then there are lower races below it. So when somebody, well, I don't, ra- I don't, I, I, I stand point on, on the meaning I gave. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change it due to, uh, due to a, a, a certain word, the way that I use it. No, I'm not no. all waited. I hear we're, we're it. So about, it do you is. Believe, it, do you believe? It, it, that? It, I know, but is there is no belief? It, it is or it isn't. No, we're, we're rough. So, do you believe that some Black Americans could believe themselves to be on the superior end of the echelon, racially wise? And do they could and they why, also believe oh, wait, that there sorry, are lower lower races on the echelon? What do you believe? Do you believe that could be? Oh, a possibility? I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm gonna answer. Can Can I answer the way that I want to, or do I have okay, to answer? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh. Well, I think nature. I think nature will subscribe to that. Uh. If we. If we. If we. Uh. Was to live in nature, as natural as we could be. It. 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 It'll. It'll make its own judgment on who's superior compared to who's not uh mm-hmm. uh now for the form of form of thinking mm-hmm. uh you know i don't think in in the comparative of thinking yeah maybe you know what i mean so is an equal is an equal plateau yeah but you know what i mean when it comes to uh biologically uh it's a little different you know what i mean nature nature kind of shows one a little bit more love than the other you don't so, have to answer it i i'm just saying like i already you know. answered it though i wanted okay. to answer it all right so nature nature itself nature itself provides to not not a belief but a fact mm-hmm. you know so <clears throat> but in in with way to thank it uh uh-uh. but then you do have some that that have lack of knowledge of who they are and what they are mm-hmm. and they 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 don't they they don't think themselves to be who they who nature prescribes them to be right so yeah you do have that you do have it so yeah okay is there anything else you'd like to add i mean you've heard a lot there was a lot of statements going around yeah it was a young lady on here uh uh was saying that there that she was up she i'm gonna paraphrase it i don't want to butcher what i said i want to be honest and she was saying like how uh, the new thing is that black Americans are trying to say that they're the old Max and they're the, they're yeah, the Afrocentrism. Original. Yeah. But it's not Afrocentrism. Afrocentrism mm-hmm. is different from this, from what uh, Afro see you have the, the, and that's, that's where the information information gap has been like, but not but, heard correctly. But instead of definitions, but, do you listen, think let me that tell you out. Let me let me let me let you let me let you hear what, how right. it's going. But do you inside think of the, wrong? inside of the community you have you have uh, the the Pan Africans 
and you have the American Indians, do, which are uh, it's a it's a line drawn in between that. You know, the American Indians are what you guys would call African Americans, but majority are not. And the Pan African are those who claim to be African American. And mm-hmm. that's that's a division in between those two itself. But it's more it's more uh the the American Indian because most of those, most of the American Indians, they were told by their grandparents that they were American Indian. Now, the African American thing came about in 1980s with Jesse Jackson when he made that up, and mm-hmm. everybody, everybody just took hold to that name and started to proclaim themselves to be African American. Mm-hmm. So, with that issue. Uh, that's what that is. It's it's a lie. It's not the same thing at all. It's two different things. Mm-hmm. So, well, what uh, about African Americans like trying to take on uh, the origins of other cultures, such as like the Olmecs or the Hebrews, the Israelites? Well, the, well, what do you say to well, that? the Hebrews. You have to understand that that the Hebrews they're not taking on um, they're not taking on the culture. It's it, it is who they is. Who came? What other culture came over here on slave ships? When it's speaking from a Hebrew standpoint, what other what other culture came over here on slave ship and was brought to a country and treated evil by strangers? Who who been done like that? So, so, so Woodruff, you believe Africans. you believe that they are? You actually believe that they are the real? I was about to I ask you a question. I didn't don't do that. I ask you a question. What other people? I'm not done. I'm I'm gonna answer your. I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to be extremely fair and answer your question, mm-hmm. but. I'm going I want I need I want you to answer my question first. What other culture has been taken from another land and brought to another land and then treated evil? That's in America Jews. right now. Uh yeah, many other I mean, people. There were there were On many, a slave ship. Yeah, there were many other races taken as slaves. Like who? Uh I mean the Hispanics, the whites, uh you No, know, Hisp- Hispanics Jews. didn't even exist. Hispanics didn't even exist. Well, I could say like the Mesoamericans. Who's the, what we, Mesoamericans? Where they was brought from? They were enslaved. Spanish. Where were they brought from on a ship? Yeah, and some of them were transported. Uh, to they, where they were, were they taken brought from, from on a ship? They, yeah, some of them they were, were taken from different parts countries. of uh, exactly. The They're from French. parts of the oh, Caribbean. Yeah, uh, yeah. Native Americans were enslaved. That was like a major thing. That, and that everyone was enslaved. Was enslaved. Just, the uh, Irish slavery. Just, the just, thing, so. No, 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 no. And yeah, and was nobody in treaty evil for four hundred years? That's not uh uh-uh. uh now now and now I'm gonna answer that person's question. That's yeah. not my belief. That's not what I go by. Okay. I just know that I just know the what they say. And it describes only one people. And I'm a historian too as well, so it does mm mm nah. That You're does that no 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 no. Okay. What about, what about the old it, You, you got to go a little bit better than just feelings. You know, yeah. you got to go a little bit better than just feelings and emotions because emotion and feelings are not facts. You know, yeah. so uh, it was something else. Somebody, you have one. Well, you asked me a question. Somebody else is asking me right. a question. Uh, the question they asked you is: Do you believe that um, African Americans are the original Israelites? Uh, the already uh. I don't myself. I don't. I don't subscribe. I used to be an Israelite. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I don't. I'm not. I just don't go with that bandwagon because there's so many things that my grandparents told me as a child, mm-hmm. and the pictures and death certificates and and different things of that that we hold in our family since the 1800s that let me know that, man, this, this is not you. That's only something that is just, that just made you feel good. Now it may be for others. Yes, it may be for others, but it, that's not for me. My, God. my family, my family is American Indian. So uh, I don't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I'm not here to degrade the Hebrew Israelites or anything. I'm just here to represent okay. myself. Thank you for the statements. West Coast, I know you've been waiting for a long time, but you decided to jump in the box, which means you have something to